Traditional commercial fishing in Belize is categorized as a cottage industry, single fishermen going out in their boats. Today, fishing is one of Belize's largest employers. Approximately 3,000 commercially licensed fishers are trolling Belizean waters. Belizean fishers have extracted thousands of tons of lobster, conch, and fin fish from our territorial waters. And everyone agrees, the numbers have taken a toll. The greatest challenge that we face is overfishing in our seas. And this is really compounded by the fact that we have um, encroachment from the Mexicans up north and encroachment from the Guatemalans and Hondurans down south. Um, and that is, is very, very difficult to overcome. To overcome some of the challenges in the fishing industry, Belize implemented seasons, quotas, and size limits, banned bottom trawling, restricted the use of gill nets, spear guns, and fish traps, and stepped up enforcement efforts to protect marine products. But the strategy is not enough to replenish stocks. Today, fishermen have to race to find favorites and customers have to dig deep to buy fish. I mean, we already know that prices are higher than they used to be. And that's, you know, largely a, a function that there's, there's, there's less. It's getting harder to find. You know, grouper and snapper are really not the main um, fish that are being filleted and sold as grouper and snapper. If we want to keep eating the, the prime things like lobster and conch, we definitely have to look at, you know, long-term strategies and a whole comprehensive management. Approximately 14% of our waters enjoy some form of protection, but only 2% of our territorial sea is fully protected from fishing. 2% of our sea is not enough to rebuild 98%. I think anyone can, you know, feel out that math and realize that's just not enough. Full protection increased from 2 to 3% in 2012 when the Turnef Reef Atoll was declared Belize's largest marine protected area. So from now on, we really should not be declaring any more protected areas. We might need to revisit boundaries, um, but there will not be a clamoring to declare any more protected areas. So the focus will then shift into really enforcement um, doing more research to understand if we are in fact effectively managing our marine protected areas. So we monitor those two things through these benthic... Dr. Melanie McPhee is the director of the Healthy Reefs for Healthy People initiative. She's advocating for expanding the boundaries of fully protected zones within the MPAs. We just need to do more because realistically, you know, if you think about what farmers do or foresters, you have to replant. You can't keep taking and taking and not replanting seed. We've always assumed the ocean was um, unending and, and you, you, couldn't, you couldn't take everything from the ocean because there was so much of it. And that's not true. You know, we need to get that number up to 10, 15, 20 percent at some point in time in order to have, and then we'll have more fish. We'll have more, we could potentially have a lot more being taken out in total stocks. The total lobster catch, total um, conch catch and fin fish catch could be much greater than it is now if we had more of it in full reserve with those big fish pumping out babies. That's what we need. Success stories like the Hul Chan Marine Reserve show MPAs work, but replenishment takes time, years in fact, which means the fishers need to find income alternative. The fish debate is actually a bread and butter issue. Statistics for 2011 show that almost 13,000 Belizeans are direct beneficiaries, while another thousand people are employed in the processing, marketing, and service industries. Minute changes in the norm have widespread ripple effects. A microcosm of this reality made headlines in April 2012 when local fishermen filled the quota for conch six weeks early. Fortunately, they were able to see the immediate benefits of it the following, following conch season. And in fact, they, some of them have been so bold as to say, maybe we need to close it even earlier because this season has been very, very um, productive. 
and so that that was was a bold decision to make but bold decisions aside the hand-to-mouth scenario of the fishers put the spotlight squarely on diversification most fishers want to know that they can fish for life and so asking them to to to, to do an alternative livelihood is is really asking a lot Celia Mahung is the director of TIDE, the Toledo Institute for Development and the Environment. The organization continues to introduce new money-making ideas to local fishers. There's a lot of planning that needs to take place in order for that project to work. You have to, the person has to be interested, you need to build the capacity of that individual in order for that person to, to, to do well. And it takes an investment, it takes initial funding, so that you can you know, start your project up. There needs to be monitoring and evaluation of that project as you go along. That's what they know, that's what they do best. It's hard to tell them, well, really, maybe you should think about doing deep sea fishing, because they are not used to that. You know? So that is something that we as a minister are tasked to introduce to them and to f convince them that in fact there are opportunities that are unexplored and that they really should consider it. And I, I think it's a major obligation, I think, that to have been given this responsibility to be custodians of this, I mean, true treasure of nature. And it's also the way we identify ourselves. It's kind of like our ID badge. Anywhere we go, we say who we are. At a farm Belize, we've got the second largest barrier reef. Consumers need to realize the impact they're having on the fishing industry. We, we won't buy a small egg. You complain about the small egg when you go to the, to the grocery store. Don't buy undersized seafood because in the longer run, you'll end up without. Uh, and that's that what people think that we can't end there. But that's what you're doing. You're taking away from the stock that will help uh, reproduce um, come five years down the road. And that's what we need to start. And buying it out of season. It's, it's the same thing that you're doing. Because we need to, it is politics. I mean, these are difficult decisions. And any politician that wants to stay in politics has to make decisions that they feel like are going to keep the masses happy. But I believe that the masses can understand this and do want to see the resources maintained in a long time. So our, our job is then to make, make ourselves vocal and visible and let the politicians know that we're with them on those tough decisions that will give us resources in the long term because that's what we all want. We, everybody wants to see that.